I have something for you. You can come in now. I got them waiting outside. <laughs> All right, you ready? You just yeah. got home from school. Three, two, oh, I'm about to trip over the one. thing. It's here. Yeah, it's right there. Three, two, one. my channel today I'm gonna to be reviewing the hippo sublimation ink with the sublimation paper paired with the Epson eco tank 2800 so this is the Epson eco tank 2800 I'm just gonna go ahead unbox this really quick it's not really about the printer it's all about the hippo sublimation ink I've had a few people ask me about um, that ink I've never used this ink before um, I've always used printers jack and of course, in my Sawgrass printer, I have the um, the Subleject Sublimation Ink. So I'm going to unbox this. Hippo reached out to me and they wanted me to review their ink. And I said, well, I already have ink in my, my, um, my printers. And you know, you, I don't really want to mix the ink. So in order to get an honest review, in order to get an accurate, you know, um, review on how the ink will do, I didn't want to put the ink on top of old ink. Definitely didn't want to mix it. So Hippo was like, we're going to send you a printer. So I'm just going to set this up really quick. I have the 2720 as well. This one is the 2800. They're pretty much the exact same printer. This is so light. This is very light. And of course, it comes with the regular inkjet ink and I won't be using that because I'll be using the sublimation ink so the bottles are pretty much all the same it comes with the regular ink so we have to convert it okay so the eco tanks allow you to put the ink in without using a syringe and a needle which is just so much better my other epson the workforce 7710 of course i have to always use a needle and syringe so the eco tanks are much better so i'm just going to zip through this because you've seen me unbox printers before i'm going to go ahead set it up connect it to my wi-fi and then i'll be back when it's time to load the hippo ink i'm going to see how good this hippo ink really is so this printer takes paper size A4 and letter size for sublimation and works with the Epson Smart Panel app, which you can connect via Bluetooth. I'm excited, so let's go ahead and unbox this ink and try it out. It also comes with a pair of gloves, but guess what? You won't even need these gloves because you will not get your hands dirty. These bottles are leak-proof, and if you turn them upside down, they will not drip out. So you have 127 milliliters of black, and you have your cyan, magenta, yellow all 70 milliliters of course you use more black than anything so i like the fact that they gave you more most give you the exact amount when you first start out so i like that so you have your black magenta cyan and yellow cover opens up just like so this is where your ink would go in and of course everything is labeled as well with the black yellow magenta and cyan so i'm going to start with the black let me see if there's anything underneath just to make sure it might be sealed. Oh, it's not. So it comes just like that. This hole should puncture right through and it should fill up the chamber. Perfect. And I hear it. It's pouring through. The chamber will definitely fill up. You should do just one at a time to give it time to flow through. I'm going to let it get to the top and then stop it. Just like so, screw that back on, close that one, and go to the next one. So I'm just repeating all the steps until all the ink is filled up. I really love the fact that these bottles are leak proof. I did not want to mess up my new craft table. So the ink only comes out when it's punctured at the top. All of the chambers are filling up one by one. One of the bottles should fill up an entire chamber. You might have a small little bit left over, but this process was so easy, simple, and fast. Now the ink was going to initialize and I am done. 
Okay, the installation is done. I'm gonna click okay. All right, so I'm gonna do a print head nozzle check. So we're just checking the print quality right now before we actually run it through. So I have some broken lines. I'm not sure if you can see it, but I have some broken lines right here and just a little bit right over there. It says, are there any missing segments? I'm going to click yes, clean print head, and I'm going to click yes. I'm gonna use the same paper because we're not wasting paper over here. Okay, so it's cleaning and then it will reprint. And you can hear the nozzles cleaning the printer right now. It looks exactly the same to me. The black is solid, but the blue and the blue is not. The magenta and I think the yellow is solid. So we definitely got to clean it one more time. So when you put in new ink, you definitely have to run a few nozzle head checks until you have no broken lines. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like if you make a print and all your lines are not solid. So now I need to switch to the sublimation paper. Again, this is the Hippo sublimation paper, 125 grams. This comes with 110 sheets, eight and a half by 11. And of course it says you can put this on t-shirts, ceramic mugs, mouse pads, wood, woods. Hmm. I have never sublimated wood yet. Oh, yes, I have. I did wood ornaments. I've never used the Hippo paper or the sublimation ink, so I'm excited to see how it comes out. So it has their logo on the back. That's how you'll know that that's the back of the paper. The front feels like a smooth matte finish almost. It's not shiny. It's not too dull. So of course my printer, the E2800 um, prints straight out. So I don't need to rotate it. I'm just gonna insert it just like this, front facing. And now I'm gonna click print. Okay, we're gonna get a first look at the Hippo ink up close. I see also how long the eco tank takes to print. And already I noticed that the lines are broken. That's because the ink was broken. So it definitely affects. So I'm going to keep trying to run it through. I am not going to press that because as you can see the ink, you can see those lines in there. And that's because when I kept testing the ink and doing the print head nozzle check, it kept letting me know that the blue was broken. So I'm gonna run a few more tests because I definitely can't press that. So we gotta keep trying. So as I am still running these print head nozzle checks, little man came home from school. So I am helping him with his homework because I'm a mom first. Don't judge me because I had to Google some of these answers. Please, that's a whole nother vlog. Anyway, back to this printer. Okay, so I am just gonna print it again and I'm gonna see how it comes out. Some of the lines are still broken in only the cyan color. There's like two small dots. So here is up close so that way you can really see what I'm talking about. You can see those faded lines. This is the second time around. And you can really see it on the life. See how the blue is a little messed up right there? But it's much better than this one. This was the first time around. So this was the first one. That's the second one. So that's how it's coming out. All the other colors look completely fine. It's literally just the blue. So we gotta fix it. Gotta fix it. Okay, so it's the next day and I finally, finally, after running multiple nozzle head checks, I finally got all the lines to be straight. You want no broken lines. That's how you'll know that your ink will come out properly. So now I am going to put in the sublimation paper. And on the back, I just want to mention that it will give you the actual instructions, everything that you can use it with, and your actual temperatures. So the recommended instructions are listed on the back of the Hippo Sublimation paper. So that's great. So on the back of the paper, there is a little Hippo watermark. It's very faint, but you can definitely see it. So that's how you know the difference between the front and the back. So I am going to place my paper in front side up. No need to flip it because it prints straight out. And I'm going to send my images to the printer now. Okay, it is now printing and we're going to see how it comes out. You guys get the first look. It looks like that blue is completely 
solid. That's what we want. I'm going to put it up closer next to the older one so that way you guys can really see the difference. Do you see the difference in the blues? See the broken lines? This was the first one, so you can really see it here. And now this is the print quality that you want. So we're going to go ahead and press this and see how it turns out. But of course, I'm going to separate these. I'm going to put this one on the shirt and I'm going to put these two on a mug. Let's go. So this is what I mentioned earlier. The box has recommended transfer instructions. So for your shirt applications, it says between 380 to 420. So I'm going to actually put it up to 380 and then we'll press it for eh, 45 seconds just to be sure. So I'm using my Rakoma heat press and I'm going to change that to 380. And then I'll take that down from 60. I had it at 375 for 60 seconds, but now I'm going to put it for, I like to be extra short, so, but I'm, I am going to put it to 45 seconds. I'm going to put it to 45 seconds. This does have the slide out drawer. I'm going to just separate these. I'm going to do the shirt first and then I'll do the mugs. Want to see how everything comes out. We're testing out the Hippo ink for the first time, so we don't just want to do it on a shirt. I want to show you how it looks on mugs as well. We definitely want to see the print quality. So I'm just going to cut around this image just a little bit. And of course, I'll surprise my son with his shirt. His school colors are yellow and blue, so that's why I use this... Um, this color, that's why I really wanted the blue to work out because I could have just changed the color, but my son's school colors are blue and yellow. And I got the SVG again from Creative Fabrica. You can change this out to any color that you want. And this time I'm gonna be using a jerseys. This is the jerseys, 100% polyester shirt. The gildans weren't working too good, so I'm gonna see how this one does because I never pressed the jersey one yet. So, I'm praying that this one does good. I'm going to go ahead, of course, and put my butcher paper in between. And then I'll put one on top, of course. I'm going to insert the butcher paper underneath. And I'm going to pre-press the shirt to get all the moisture out for just about five seconds. Okay, I'm just going to pre-press that. In my drawer, I keep all my pads and I keep these. So I'm gonna use the child one, that's toddler, infant. We're gonna use the youth size. I got those from Heat Transfer Warehouse as well. I think. <laughs> so I'm gonna use that. That helps you center up your shirt perfectly as well. I'm gonna use the top. I'm going to use the top of the words to try to get, make sure this is straight. But now I just have to bring it down because of the cap. Okay, so that should be good. Okay, so I'm going to leave it just like that. I'm just going to put two pieces of tape on the side just to hold it down in place. And I'm going to use the top butcher sheet. And then I'm just going to put... Just gonna slide it up to where that cuff is off of the machine. Okay, so we're at 380. I'm gonna go ahead and press. All right, the moment of truth. Let's see how the shirt did for the very first time using the Hippo ink. And again, I used the 100% polyester shirt. I'm going to remove the heat transfer tape. Let me move what side is easier. Look at that. That came out really nice. That came out so nice. Okay, hippo. <laughs> okay, hippo. Let's get a closer look. Look at those vibrant colors. I like the way that came out. It's nice and vibrant. And of course, sublimation. This is in the shirt. Let's check out to make sure nothing went through. Nothing bled through. I really like that. Of course, nothing on the other side. 
Now y'all know I have always used my printer's jack, but I'm liking this hippo ink. Okay, let's go ahead and let me put it on a mug. The box says for mugs, 350 to 400. So that's perfect. And it says up to 210. And I have mine set to 210 as well. So it recommends if you're using ceramic mugs, anywhere from 350 to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, medium pressure, 100, 150 to 210 seconds. And I keep mine on 210 for pretty much all mugs. So I ended up switching to my sublimation oven, but just to let you know, those are the settings if you do use a mug press. Okay, so of course, these are the designs that I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put on a mug, but guess what mugs I'm using? Ooh, look at these nice ombre mugs. I have been dying to use these, and I think this design would go great with the colors. Well, I'm gonna see. I haven't pressed them yet. I've been wondering what to put on these mugs because, you know, I just don't wanna throw anything up there. I definitely wanted to put something on here that would, um, would complement the mug. The circumference is, you know, when you measure your mugs, you want to make sure that you measure the mug from top to bottom to make sure that it can fit. And, okay. So now because it's darker at the bottom, we're going to see how well it does. And it's a frosted mug. So I'm just going to press it. Now mine measures about two and a half inches in height. So depending upon your image will determine the width. So the height of the cup is a little bit more than three inches. So you definitely don't want to go um, over that. I know people always ask me what's the dimensions or what height, what measurements did I use? So just measure your cup and then just take a few, you know, um, inches off the top and the bottom. And definitely want to make sure when you're measuring the width, depending upon what you're sublimating on it, you don't want it to go too wide. You want it to stay in the front of the mug. So this is about two and a half inches in height, and this is about three something going across. You can look on the inside of these mugs. That's why I like these mugs. So I'm gonna move it over because it's too close to the handle. I love that you can see, let's see if I can get get you guys to see. You can see the inside to help you line it up as well. And that looks good. Heat transfer tape. These mugs and the tape, everything comes from Heat Press Nation. Heat Press Nation. So my mug press. And of course my main heat press came from Heat Press Nation as well. I get a lot of questions on that. I know I talked about them in earlier videos, but I have a lot of new subscribers that might not know where it came from. But the one I used today came from Racoma. So I have about three different presses, but my main one, the one that I love the most, sorry, Racoma, sorry, Heat Transfer Warehouse, is the one from Heat Press Nation. That's my baby. That's my day one. Gonna press that. I really wanna see how well these images come out. So I found those images on Creative Fabrica as well, and I just thought they were really cute. And now I'm just adding butcher paper so the ink doesn't go through. Thank God for multiple machines. So I'm going to go ahead, turn that to 195 Celsius, hit my hot air button, take this down to eight minutes. Only thing, this one, it definitely has to warm up. So we're going to run it and then we'll be ready to supplement. So now since I'm switching to the actual um, sublimation oven, I'm going to have to use my silicone mug wraps. And even though I have butcher paper on it, if you don't use butcher paper, you definitely want to make sure you have a lint roller or something to get the lint off because it will sublimate onto the mug. So you just want to make sure that you use a lint roller to get any loose particles or anything off. And I'm just going to place this in here just like so. These are linked in my Amazon store. I got these off of Amazon. I've had them for well over a year. They work great. Probably some of them I had to buy more because um, I just needed more since I'm using the sublimation oven. You can put so much in here. I've put up to nine things in here at one time. Again, you can see the design on the inside and I am so excited to see how these turn out. And I don't need this actual top tray. Can that fit in there? Okay, so I'll just leave the top level in. 
I always put them in just like this so I can easily grab it out. No need to rotate it at all. And the only thing about this, of course, it does take, you know, a lot longer to sublimate. And I can definitely tell that it's sublimated already because I can see inside the mug. But I'm not gonna show you yet, you gotta wait. I'm just gonna go ahead and take this off. These are definitely reusable and the butcher paper is coming off. See how that looks inside? So now I've only sublimated those clear glass ones and depending upon the color that you use, of course, they look more vibrant when you have something in between them, but this is frosted. So I'm wondering and I'm hoping that you'll be able to see the colors more vividly, more clear, because of course the glass is frosted a little. So let me go ahead and unwrap these and let's see how the Hippo ink did. It's really still hot. Remember, when you use a sublimation oven, the mug, um, the handle is hot as well, versus when you use a mug press, the handle isn't hot because the handle is sticking out. So I'm just gonna use this. Sometimes I'm impatient, but I like to wait a little bit because I found out when you wait a little bit, it eliminates the ghosting. So we already know the shirt came out great. This is the shirt. Okay, so I have an image about to print out for the mouse pad. I'm going to go ahead and uncover these. These have completely cooled down. So let's see what they look like. Wow. The next image is printing out. Okay, and here is the final reveal for the mugs. They came out so cute. This is the red or pinkish ombre one and this is the blue one i'm gonna make all different types of designs for these put you know names you can even use decals if you don't want if you want your image to be much brighter than sublimation but this came out so nice if you stick the image in behind it of course that's what it looks like this is the blue one I'm just trying to give you guys lots of color options so you can see what the colors will look like. But that's how the mugs turned out. They came out so great. I love that. But now we're about to press this sublimation design that I just came up with for my son for a mouse pad for his gaming room. Something real quick and simple. I just measured out the mouse pad. And I did this in my Silhouette Studios. Um, this was about, I measured it to be about a nine by about eight or eight and a half or eight. So that way I can definitely get a full bleed all the way on. So I'm just gonna put this on to the heat press and press this. So like I said, I wanted this to be a full bleed. I got these a while ago from US Coastal Business, um, but I know they sell them in different places as well. So I'm just gonna make sure that when I press, cause the very first mouse pad I press, it didn't get all the way on the side. So I made sure that I made it bigger this time. So I definitely want to make sure I get a full bleed on this mouse pad. All edges covered, all corners covered. And I think I'm good. I'm not gonna put any, um, any tape down on it. Doesn't really need tape. I'm just gonna definitely apply another piece of butcher paper. And I'm going to refer back to the box. The box says for mouse pads, of course, 390 to 410 at 45 seconds. So I actually need to take my heat press up. So I'm gonna take it up to about 400. I'll do in between at 45 seconds. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and press this. The heat press is up to 400 degrees and we're gonna press this for 45 seconds. And because this is, you know, definitely a thicker material i might have to hold it down but oh this is why you need sometimes that other type of platen but let's see how i can do this i'm gonna have to hold it down okay so when i moved i think my movers jammed my knob and i can't loosen this up otherwise i would be able to loosen this up and the platen would close and with the racoma heat press the seconds won't go if it's not um 
if it's not all the way down. So I'm hoping I'm getting even pressure for, um, from the top to the front of the mouse pad. So I'm just holding it down for roughly around 45 seconds in my head. I'm gonna lift it up and I pray that this comes out right. Cause I've never had to do it that way. Y'all see that smoke? Y'all see that sublimation? All right, all right. I know it's sublimated. So, cause you can tell the image came through on the back of the paper. I'm just gonna tear this up and we're gonna see how this mouse pad came out guys. Oh, look at that. Can't tell me why I stay missing the edge. I think it shifted, but that looks so good. That's only because I shifted the paper. I had enough, but the paper shifted. But this came out so good. I can just fill that in with a black marker. Ha, huh? how about that? Listen, this Hippo ink is really great. So if you're interested in this Hippo ink, there will be a special coupon code down below. Y'all already know that I give y'all discounts whenever I am doing something. When I give these good reviews, I want you to be able to purchase it if you like. And if you like it, we have a coupon code. Thank you, Hippo, so much for sending me this product. Again, this was the Hippo Sublimation Ink paired with the Hippo Sublimation Paper. I sublimated the mugs, the shirts, and a mouse pad for you so you can see how well the image quality came out. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. I've always used Printer's Jack in my regular Epson, but now we might be changing over to the Hippo Ink. I converted the Epson EcoTank 2800 using the Hippo Ink and it came out great. These colors came out so vibrant. So you can see it up close. These mugs will be listed in my Etsy shop coming up soon and I will be definitely adding some more designs. But my son is gonna be so happy with the shirt. I have something for you, you can come in now. I got him waiting outside. <laughs> All right, you ready? You just yeah. got home from school. Three, two, oh, I'm about to trip over the one. thing. It's here? Yeah, it's right there. Three, two, one. Oh, this is the texture I like. I like this. You like that? Yeah, this is the this is the soft one, y'all. This is the one I like. That's the polyester shirt. What does mm -hmm. it say, Kaden? It say Roblox. I was talking about the Roblox pad. <laughs> talking about the shirt. What does the shirt say? It says Senior Drip, Senior 2020. Oh, because I'm graduating, you guys. I'm uh -huh. going to middle school. So it uh -uh. says Senior 2022 Drip. And what's this? That's just something I use to prop it up. That's nothing. <laughs> that's, okay. that's just something I use to prop it up for the picture. You gonna change into the shirt? Mm -hmm. Change into the shirt real quick. Let them see that drip. Let them see that yeah. sauce. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Thank you so much. And this, this is so professional, but this, this is the, this is the good stuff. Yeah, I'm gonna wear this. I'm gonna wear this today. You go, no, you gotta wear it to school. You gotta let everybody see that senior oh, drip. Fine. I'll wear it to school now. I think I made you a, too small of a size. That's a size medium. I should have made you the large. But you won't be a senior next year, so you'll have to you only wear it for the rest of this year for yeah. school. And then this this is like something like professional. This is something you would see in the school. Um, excuse me, your mother is a professional? Yeah, I know. This is a prof professional. Like, I like this. I'm going to go put this in the room right now. Yeah, put it on your computer? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. You got like, to like, go, get LED lights and, you know, get the stuff. I have up. them. I have them. Anyway, that's not what this you is. You got the, the lights? Where they at? We I have start. the lights. I just got to put them up. Yeah, we got to do that today. You can be doing that. I don't want to I'm not doing that today. I got other stuff to do. Oh. All right. Wow. I'm glad you like the shirt. Mm-hmm. And this. All right. Dab on them. Oh. See you after graduation. And, yeah. Peace out. And then you won't be a senior. You'll be a freshman. And then hey. I won't be a senior. I'll be a freshman. Bye. All right. That's a wrap for today. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.